This video is for those who played Nine Souls already and want to enjoy my journey and those who might never play the game but want to see it. Back in the days I have been one of the ten souls, but one day things have changed. Our own master fought us and believed we did die this day. But we didn't. A young boy saved us. His name is Xuan Xuan and he lives in a tiny village, where all the citizens believe that it is a huge privilege to be sacrificed to the ten souls. One day Xuan Xuan should be sacrificed as well. But he reminds us on our little sister, so we did not hold back anymore and saved his life. And now the actual game starts. We need all the soul seals to unlock the control code. Every soul has one seal and they usually do not give them to us for free. The first soul we are supposed to meet is Lord Quafu. He's a craftsman and also an all good friend of ours. The only problem, he does not believe me when I taught him that I am Yi. So we had to struggle a bit with the first boss. To be fair, I struggled a lot because I did not understand one important move from the game. The talisman mechanic. You can smash a talisman on the body of an enemy and detonate it. I thought you press the button, in my case air one, release it and then hold to detonate. But you are actually supposed to keep holding it immediately without releasing the button. Why is this important you may ask? Well, because if you damage an enemy, he loses health, but can also recover the transparent part of the health bar. If you detonate the talisman, the transparent part of the health bar will disappear immediately, which is very helpful. So after I figured that out, we could beat this boss and were able to meet Lord Quafu. He is glad to see us and also willing to help me. The first important thing he is doing for us is giving us a bow, which allows me to attack from a far distance. With this great new ability we go on to the next territory. And here I have to highlight a beautiful thing about the game. The different areas. Every territory has its own designs and also their own twists. What do I mean by that? For example we have here the lake, which is not just a background. No, you have to cross it with a boat. This might be just a tiny thing, but having unique areas is something I do appreciate more than having just new enemies with a new map color. After reaching the end of the lake, we met the next soul. Or in other words, we run into a trap and pretend to know that it is a trap. Gumang modified humans to make them her slaves. To our luck, the game is quite accurate to reality and humans are pretty dumb. So those two slaves do as she says and brought me down with all their might. Don't worry Gumang, I'm pissed about that as well, because now that we are all the way down, we have to move all the way up again. For that we had another trip on a boat. This time even high concentrated yellow water you were not allowed to touch, making things a bit harder. We managed to get through this and had now our fight against Gumang, or better said, her slaves. Unfortunately I have to say that Gumang has changed a lot, because she is treating those two not very well. Years ago she were not like that. She write them up and actually just wanted them on her side forever. Make sure no one has to be hungry. But all those feelings have disappeared over time I think. So after beating and immobilizing her, we gave Gumang a taste of her own medicine. She went insane very fast, we left her behind and took her soul seal. With that we had already two from nine. On our way to the next soul, we reached a very weird place. It was like a magic trick, always repeating the same room. I was shortly confused and then decided to keep running the entire time. Surely something will change soon? And well, what should I say, the place looked weirder and darker from time to time. Until... Yeah, that was weird as fuck, so we just run as fast as possible to the next area. The warehouse, and again we do have to talk about the design. We have to move from container to container, dodge lasers or stamping machines and fight the enemies at the same time. A really cool place and a well fitting design for a warehouse. We met here Chiyu, he said he's on his way to find his brother, but the bridge did disappear. We helped him by finding a switch for the bridge and received our reward. The reward is a jade stone, which is actually very helpful. Revival jade. When HP reached 0 for the first time, you will revive and regain 25% of your health. Continuing our way to the next soul, we found a very cool toy which made things a lot easier. And after we couldn't move on anymore because the mecha robot was a bit too tall, we found the transport platform to Yan Lao. 
The only problem I haven't told you is that Yan Lao kinda likes to play on time and sadly we did allow him that. I'm honestly not mad about him for being a red like that. I'm mad about him because of the enemy we have to fight. Don't worry, this guy is not hard to beat. After all, I would say he's not really a boss, more an elite enemy. But may I ask you, doesn't that guy seem familiar to you? Remember this boy here who is looking for his brother? Well, I guess I found his brother first. And I also think his brother won't be alive anymore when Chi Yu gonna find him. To make things even worse, we did even run into Chi Yu and he asked us if we found his brother. So we explained everything and Chi Yu was confusingly happy. According to him, we did not really kill his brother. And with that good news, we now fight it against Yan Lao. And here a pro tip. When he's aiming at you, you obviously have to dodge. But this also counts when he already hits his sword. The shots do not stop. In my case I obviously calculated it, as you can see. I have perfectly... Um, I have perfectly... I actually have 0 HP, right? I have perfectly beaten him! <laughs> exactly. Fun fact, it is actually the same run where he did also hit me after I thought he can't hit me anymore. We hack into the system of this machine and killed the first Saw, remember? Kwafu is our friend and Gu Meng went insane, but Yan Lao is the first one we killed. And with that we can collect also his Soul Seal, 33% is done. But this time it is different. We do not go back to our home base and chat with the others. Last time in our base talking with Abacus, our assistants, he told us that we will find in the warehouse and in the factory one Saw for each place. The names he said were Yan Lao, who was in the warehouse, and in the factory, which we already crossed. We should have found Ji Quan. On our way back, he contacted us. More specific, he invited us to a fair 1v1 situation. And I don't know if it looks fair to you, but he has no fucking HP bar, which means for me, he is for this fight immortal. But he has a fair point. We are immortal too, that's why he hauled us here and tortured us. He has no idea on which rooting node we would spawn again after he killed us, so we had to find a way out of the prison. Exhausted with no energy, we tried to sneak around all enemies until we found a resting point. This resting point was also very necessary because we engaged the prison keeper, a boss who spawns a lot of enemies. Rule number one if you engage someone like that, keep killing the tiny minions first. Little hint for you, here in the prison area is a jade hidden which I luckily found. This jade allows the talisman to simultaneously hit an additional target. That way we can focus on the two important enemies in the fight. The boss in general and the immortal elite he has spawned in the second phase. I talked the second time about the jades, so maybe I should explain you shortly how the jades work. As you can see there are a few jades. To the current time I only have those. Each jade stone costs you equipment points, so you cannot just put in all jades. You have to decide which are fitting to your playstyle or current situation. So I decided to take the additional hit instead of the revive. With that more damage orientated build, it didn't took long until the doggo were begging me to kill him. And here's the second time I'm very sad about killing a boss. The last time he was at least not really dead according to Chi Yu. But this time... You can say what you want. This doggo is definitely not alive anymore. With all that rage and anger we had, we were now looking for Ki Kwan. And I do not play fair anymore. In the factory we found something great, a gene eradicator. This toxin can use irreversible damage when added to a transmutation crucible. Guess who we gave that shit and guess who was totally weak now. I'm not even kidding, he has now been the worst, weakest and most boring boss of all. I let the fight play now on 2x speed in the background because the entire fight with all his faces took only 2 damn minutes. In the second phase he was even easier than in the first phase. So yeah, let me know which boss in your opinion is the most boring one. For me it is sadly Ji Kwan. And I said sadly because I did like him as a character a lot though. But I have good news for you. We are going from the worst boss to the greatest boss, and more or less directly. This lady here is called Lady Ethereal, or Ethereal, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm sorry, Ethereal, let's, let's go with that. She controls a dream world, also called the Soulscape. It is a project idea from us, which she worked on together with a lot of other people. 
The main idea has been a spirit immortality. Put it simply, it's a plan to place all Solarians into a virtual reality while their bodies are put into a cryo sleep. And right now, we are in a virtual reality. And Lady Ethreal doesn't even realize it. This place forced us to move on into a cool jump and run mechanic. Some places are hidden in the darkness, the flowers switch to spikes, the enemies get harmless, and as we kept moving, we are back again, this time able to see her co-workers. We repeat this a few times and every time we get back, the people in the background get more insane. Until we found out the truth, all of them are not real. As I said, we are in the dream world, which is in control of Lady Eth real. All her partners died and to calm her pain, she lied in this dream world to herself that everyone is still alive and doing well. Till she herself forgot that. They are dead. She is blaming the deaths on her own. Which is, if you ask me, not 100% true. The main idea is still from us. We had the project idea and with that it is also my fault. With that I feel here the worst to hit her. She seems to be a very caring person, which destroyed her own mental being and made her go insane. The boss fight I want you to see in total. As I said, in my opinion, the greatest design boss a lot of different attacks, fantastic music, great difficulty and overall just well done. The first phase is basically there to let you understand the movement set. Attacks from the heaven you have to dodge, attacks from the side you have to parry, a ball which you can jump parry, shooting some, I don't know, let's call it spikes, which you can parry too, other attacks from the side you can easily dodge and then just take advantage to damage her. And now we go on to the second phase. Here she duplicates herself twice. The only way to find out which one is the right one is to attack them all. The illusion will disappear like the shadow clone from Naruto and the true version will stay. The problem is the amount of attacks because you will not parry everything perfect in the first few times. That means your life bar gets red and still can recover, but as soon as you misclick once, you lose all your HP as a punishment. That is also not all, because she is the first boss who said after the second phase, fuck you, I'm not done, and decided to clone herself even more, but if you get used to your attacks, you can do this as well.
In the end she comes back to her sense, apologizing for being like that. We obviously told her she is not the only one at fault. As I said, I am feeling very guilty here, which makes it even worse to see that she is dead. But our time to be sad about that is very limited. Abacus calls us, because he detected anomalies in the routing nodes once again. He also tells us that we should search in the east region, starting in the grotto. There we found the next soul pretty fast. In the region is also a puzzle for deeper lore around this guy. I decided to not include him, as well as some other deeper lore things, because then the video would probably go around 2 or 2 and a half hour if I really include everything from the game. Which is a bit too long in my opinion, I'm really sorry for that. So we continue with G and her story. We have met her during the game multiple times. First time in the lake area, so even before we met the second soul. Here she gave us the ancient music sheet. She hoped we may can play the music for her once again. We gifted that sheet to Shuanshuan and he might be able to play one day. So far it didn't happen. Then we met her in the warehouse again, which signals us some warnings, because why the hell is she crossing our way so often? She even told us she can see into the future and knows that we are there for killing Yan Lao. But she did not try to stop us and then we found her just a few minutes ago actually allowed her to read my future and as you can see her reaction was something kind of shocked and then happy she said she can't leak the informations but that's fine because i gonna do it now she saw her own death and since i think immortality sucks i'm glad i could free her because she was more or less immortal for over a few hundred years. We have with that the sixth soul seal collected and coming our goal closer very fast. Because next up we have siblings, which means soul seal 7 and 8. But before we can do that, we reach new areas, and one of them is the Empyrean. Let's talk one more time about the great idea Red Candle came up with. As you saw, we got a tag from a ninja samurai, and then he just disappeared. We still see one in the background, but can't attack him. As soon as we touch the grass, it appears to us and attacks us. And that's the trick. If we touch the grass, the ninja samurai will attack us. But that's not all. We have here also immortal virus enemies. We can't kill them yet. Which makes this area a lot more annoying and disgusting together with ninja or samurais. It is definitely not my favorite area, so I started to run a bit through, did sadly not watch the theater scene because I thought there is a fight and I wanted to collect this item. Who could thought this item is a fucking soul seal? It is a soul seal from Fuxi or Faxi, the brother of the siblings. The reason why he isn't protecting it is quite simple. You saw those creatures outside infected by a virus? Well, seems like the virus got him as well and since he can't even talk anymore, he might be not able to think as well. But he is still able to fight. Oh, you gotta get big, Meg. I made the first time a break on a boss. The reason? Skill issue. Well, I also have been dumb a bit. You know, my biggest problem was the second phase. I could make the first phase without getting hit multiple times and then just lost without dealing much damage in the second phase. Because if Big Bro made his heavy attack, we need to haul Perry to reflect his attack. But when he is doing it, Little Sis did also attack us with her stabby step things. So I thought I cannot parry his attack in time. Here an advice for your life. Sometimes is overthinking not the play. Sometimes it is worth to just try things out. Because what do I have to lose here? Nothing. If I die, I die like the other 20 tries as well. But if it works, I have a chance to beat him. And in real life you have those scenarios as well sometimes. Where you overthink things and be like, nah, that's not gonna work anyways. Stop that shit and just do it. Maybe you can continue your path like I could continue after beating those two. By facing my own master and the last soul.
Yep, I wanted to show you my great throwing skills. I literally had him six times like that. Flawless until last few attacks and then just die on a heart attack. <laughs> Whatever, obviously we have beaten her later and with that finished the game. The ending scene is a bit confusing. I'm coming together with Schwan Schwan and two other people I never saw as well. But honestly that's fine, because I'm still going for some achievements, like establish a deep relationship with Schwan Schwan. Maybe this will give me some understanding who those two guys are in the end scene. I, like I said, never saw them for myself. I also go for other achievements, which maybe leads me to different endings, because I got kind of spoiler that there are multiple endings, but for my luck I don't know which kind of endings. And please do not write them in the comments yet. Some of the achievements that might lead to another ending, I think, will be like resuming the people of the Peach Blossom Village and also helps Shen Long become the leader of the Peach Blossom Village. Maybe I will do a video about all those endings as well. But to this point, you might want to enjoy my Hollow Knight experience. Here I have played Hollow Knight for my very first time until I died, and here I have completed the game. Have fun with those two videos and I hope I see you very soon.